Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm just gonna do a brief summary of what we've done so far and see what we have to do next. So we started out with Strapi as our uh, CMS and this is our essentially our backend and we'll run it as a local development server. Uh, we'll type in content, it'll store everything and we didn't really discuss it before but when we when we configured this initially, we configured it with a local SQLite database. So there's a, just a file uh, locally on our computer that's holding all of the, the content that we're typing in. Um, but it doesn't hold the images because last time we used the plugin to automatically upload any pictures up to Cloudinary. So we can add images and they'll go up and be hosted in the cloud. So that's great. Uh, now, after you have Strapi running, what we did was we set up Gatsby as our front end. So Gatsby has all of the code and it's going to grab the content from the local Strapi development server through API calls uh, using GraphQL queries. And then Gatsby is able to take all that information with the uh, the uh, files it's using as templates and and then you can run a command to build all of those uh, static sites uh, out as HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files and then we can upload them uh, to Cloudflare to actually host the website. We're using Cloudflare pages and so that's free and Cloudinary was also free. Uh, now, when a user goes to our website, they're going to wind up downloading these HTML JavaScript pages from Cloudflare. And uh, of course, the images uh, have references to URLs that are going to be hosted on Cloudinary. So we've got Cloudinary URLs inside the HTML files and the JavaScript files that the user downloads from, from Cloudflare. So that's how the user is able to visit the website and get all the information that they need. This is our current architecture and it works. It works for us as developers, but there's actually a problem here. The problem is that Gatsby and Strapi are running locally. That's a problem because if you have an author like Buddy who wants to create a new uh, blog post, well, he's not going to be able to do that because he's not able to start up a local Strapi development server in order to put that content in. He's also not going to be able to uh, run Gatsby build in order to fetch all that content and rebuild the, uh, the HTML pages. And he's also not going to be able to upload those pages up to Cloudflare because he doesn't know how to use Wrangler. And he doesn't have the uh, authentication to go into the Cloudflare and drag and drop the files in. So by running these things locally, it makes everything inaccessible to perhaps your client or authors or other users. As a developer, you can do it, but that's not a full solution. So what we want to be able to do is deploy Strapi and Gatsby so that they do their thing and they're, they're in the internet and other authors can just log into uh, to the admin panel in Strapi and it's already up and running. That's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to try and get Strapi deployed up into the internet. So let's do that now. So let's get Strapi deployed. We're going to be using render.com. Uh, it's a pretty good service. There are other options like AWS or Heroku, but with render, it's fairly easy to get Strapi up and running. And there is a free tier that we'll be able to use. I want everything in this tutorial to be free. Uh, there are some limitations with it, but we'll be able to work around them. So go ahead, get an account and sign in. Once you're signed in, you'll probably look at uh, something like this on your dashboard here. We're going to be creating a new web service. And we're going to want to build and deploy from a Git repo. So we'll select that and then you want to connect your GitHub account. Once that's connected, you'll be able to select the repo that you want to be using. We'll choose this uh, Strappy Gatsby YouTube account and you can create a name for it. We'll be deploying from the main branch. And now the root directory is going to be um, back end. And that's because, of course, we're using a mono repo here. So we have a back end and a front end both in the same repo. And we want to be deploying Strapi from the back end folder. So we're using a back end for our root directory here. And now for our build command, we're going to run npm install, and then we'll run npm run build. So previously we were running development servers uh, uh, on our local machine, but now we're going to try and run something on a production server. So npm run build will build everything and then 
npm run start will be our start command. So these are the two commands that are going to be running. And of course, we're choosing our free instance type. Now, notice there are some uh, warnings here, right? So free instances spin down after periods of inactivity and uh, they don't support some things. There's no persistent disk. Uh, so these are you know, limitations that we're going to have to work around, but it's not too bad. Uh, next, we're going to want to add our environment variables. So we're going to uh, want to copy and paste these from our environment folder, our .env folder. And there's another uh, there's another uh, environment variable here that we can add, and that's our node env. And we're going to set this to production. And that's just telling uh, render here that when we uh, build this, we're going to be using the production values for it instead of the development as we were using before. So let's go ahead, find our env folder. Uh, where was that? Here it is. We'll just copy and paste everything here from env. Paste that in, add those variables, and that should be good. Nothing necessary in advanced. And then we will create web service. And now we just have to wait a couple of minutes for render to execute all the commands, copy everything from our GitHub, clone everything, execute the commands, and get the service running live. So we'll just wait a few minutes. Okay, and we are live. So it took a few minutes. I believe it's 2.36 now. We deployed it at 2.33, so about three minutes. And we go to the link here. We are running successfully. Let's go to the admin panel here. And uh, we're being asked to log in here and create our credentials. Now, if you remember, we have this already running on our local development server where we've already created our super user admin credentials. But we have to do it again here. So let's do that real quick. And let's log in. And we're in, okay? So we go to our content manager and we see we have the uh, content types that we've already created before, author, category, and post, but they're empty. There's actually no content. All of our posts are missing, right? Here in our development server, we have all of our posts right here. So what's going on? Well, what's happening is that as I mentioned before, our local development server is using a SQLite database that's stored locally on our machine. In fact, if you look at uh, this file here in the backend folder, there's this .tmp folder with a database file in it. This is our SQLite database file. This is not present in our deployed version on render. So render doesn't have any of the content. And now there is a way for us to fix this. There's a way to migrate the data up. And so that's what we're gonna look at in our next video, sort of how to solve all of these database issues we're coming across right now. I uh, hope that helps and I'll see you then.